We're going on a hunt for integer solutions to this equation, a classic from number theory known as a Diophantine equation. Our journey will depend entirely on the value of the integer k. The question asks for all pairs of integers x and n that solve this equation for any fixed integer k we might choose. This is not just one problem. It's a whole family of problems, and the answers will be very different depending on k. Like any good detective, we'll start by examining the scene. The equation structure gives us an immediate clue about the nature of our solutions by looking at whether they are even or odd. Let's first consider the case where n is 1 or greater. This makes 2 to the n an even number. This means the left side, x squared plus k, must also be even. For their sum to be even, x squared and k must have the same parity. And since a number and its square always have the same parity, x and k must both be even or both be odd. The only exception is when n equals 0. In this case, 2 to the 0th power is 1. So if n is 0, the equation becomes x squared plus k equals 1, which means x squared is 1 minus k. Let's make this concrete by picking a specific value for k. Let's explore the case where k equals 3. With k equals 3, we are looking for integer solutions to x squared plus 3 equals 2 to the n. Let's visualize the problem. Integer solutions can only exist where the blue parabola, x squared plus 3, intersects with the yellow exponential curve, 2 to the n, at points where both x and n are integers. We can see they cross twice near n equals 2, but the exponential function grows much faster, making future integer intersections seem unlikely. Let's check the first few values of n and see what we find. If n is 0, the equation is x squared plus 3 equals 2 to the 0th power. 2 to the 0th power is 1. Subtracting 3 gives x squared equals negative 2. There's no real solution. If n is 1, x squared plus 3 equals 2. Subtracting 3 gives x squared equals negative 1. There's no real solution, let alone an integer one. If n is 2, x squared plus 3 equals 4. Subtracting 3, we get x squared equals 1. This gives us two solutions, x equals plus or minus 1. If n is 3, x squared plus 3 equals 8. This means x squared equals 5. No integer solution here. Here comes the key insight that will crack this problem wide open. Instead of working with the equation directly, we'll examine what it tells us when we look at remainders after division. If n is greater than 2, then n is at least 3. This means that 2 to the n is a multiple of 8, which is also a multiple of 4. So for n greater than 2, 2 to the n is 0, modulo 4. This means our equation becomes x squared plus 3 is congruent to 0, modulo 4. Subtracting 3 from both sides, we get that x squared must be congruent to 1, modulo 4. But this doesn't lead to a contradiction. The square of any odd number is congruent to 1 modulo 4. Our condition that x is odd is just confirmed. We need a different modulus. That's an excellent point. We're not guessing randomly. Choosing a modulus that's a higher power of 2 often reveals more structure. Since 2 to the n for n greater than or equal to 3 is always divisible by 8, looking at the equation modulo 8 is the most powerful choice we can make. Modulo 8, the right side is 0 for any n greater than or equal to 3. This implies x squared must be congruent to 5 modulo 8. An odd number can be written as 2m plus 1. Squaring this gives 4m squared plus 4m plus 1. Factoring out 4m gives us this expression. The term m times m plus 1 is a product of two consecutive integers, so it must be even. 
Multiplying it by 4 means the term 4m times m plus 1 must be a multiple of 8. This proves a famous result in number theory. The square of any odd number is always congruent to 1, modulo 8. And this gives us our contradiction. Our equation requires x squared to be 5 modulo 8, but we've just proven that the square of any odd number must be 1 modulo 8. This is impossible. This contradiction proves that no integer solutions can exist for n greater than 2 when k is 3. So, the only integer solutions when k equals 3 are the two we found by testing. 1, 2, and negative 1, 2. The solution for k equals 3 illustrates a powerful approach. But what about other values of k? For k equals 0, our equation simplifies to x squared equals 2 to the n. For x to be an integer, the left side must be a perfect square. Therefore, the right side, 2 to the n, must also be a perfect square. For a power of 2 to be a square, its exponent and must be an even integer. Let's call it 2m, where m is any non-negative integer. Substituting this back in, we get x squared equals 2 to the power of 2m. This gives us the general form of the infinite solutions. For any non-negative integer m, n is 2m and x is plus or minus 2 to the m. Visually, we can see that the parabola y equals x squared intersects with the exponential curve at multiple points, creating infinitely many integer solutions. 4k equals 7, the equation behaves quite differently than for k equals 3. The key difference is in the modular arithmetic. Our mod 8 contradiction hinged on getting x squared congruent to 5. Let's see what happens for k equals 7. For k equals 7 and n of 3 or greater, the equation becomes x squared plus 7 is congruent to 0 modulo 8. Subtracting 7, we find x squared is congruent to 1 modulo 8. This is perfectly consistent with x being an odd number, so our contradiction vanishes. This explains why k equals 7 has many known solutions, including plus or minus 3 for n equals 4, plus or minus 5 for n equals 5, and plus or minus 181 for n equals 15. This is related to Catalan's conjecture, which is now a proven theorem. But for most values of k, determining the complete set of solutions remains a deep, unsolved mystery at the frontier of mathematics. The seemingly simple equation we've explored connects to several profound areas of mathematics. This includes Pell's equations, Catalan's conjecture, and the broader field of exponential Diophantine equations, all of which remain active areas of research today. Thank you for joining this exploration into a fascinating Diophantine equation. If you enjoyed this journey from a simple problem to the edge of unsolved mathematics, please like this video and subscribe for more content.